from wherever you're watching this from, we want to say welcome and that we count it in honor to have this opportunity to share God's word with you today. Today, we're going to be continuing our series entitled Navigating Uncertainty. Here's some highlight clips from last week. But by the time he wakes up the next morning and he looks outside his window, he sees an army surrounding the city. I'm sure, like many of us, when he got out of bed that day, he had expectations, he had plans for his day. But one look outside his window, and all of those plans fell apart in a moment. Where do we even begin to navigate what is happening when everything around us uh, seems so uncertain? If we're willing to come out and call out to God, if we're willing to press beyond what our senses, our senses are telling us, there is another story beneath the one the circumstances are offering us. You know, I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that over the last few years, we have been in a season that's been marked by tidal currents of global, social, and cultural change. And just when it feels like you recover from one wave, here comes another one. Like Elijah's servant, it feels like we go to bed in one world, but by the time we wake up the next morning with no warning at all, everything has changed. But you know what I love about this is that what came as a shock and surprise to the servant did not surprise God. In fact, let me let you in on a little secret. You ready? God is not trying to figure out what to do about your situation. That's what the servant realized when God opened his eyes. He realized that what he was just waking up to, God had already covered. Before you even knew that there was something to panic about or to worry about, God already had it surrounded. That need that's in your life right now, I want you to know it's already surrounded. That situation is already surrounded. God's faithfulness is way ahead of it all. Let me let you in on one more thing. Prayer does not awaken God to your issue, but rather prayer awakens you. He awakens us to God's faithfulness. It awakens you to the fact that God already has it surrounded. Prayer puts you into a position to see what God has already finished. And that's what we, we are seeing Elisha doing for his servant when he tells him, do not be afraid. As Elijah pivots him from a position of dismay and fear, it gives the servant the opportunity to see the faithfulness of God already at work. See, fear has a tendency to make us self-absorbed and constrains our vision so that we can't see beyond ourselves in the challenge that we are facing. But I offer you the same testimony that Elisha gave to his servant. Do not be afraid. God is already at work, and God has surrounded you with his faithfulness. But how far ahead and how clearly we're able to see is largely a matter of position. You know, starting last July, scientists have had the opportunity to see the universe in a depth and clarity they have never been able to see before to actually see planets nearly 300 trillion miles away from Earth, to see galaxies over 13 billion light years away. This is attributed to a new breakthrough telescope, but it's not just the power of the telescope, but the power of where it is positioned. The James Webb Space Telescope is positioned in deep space nearly one million miles away from Earth. Its position gives it clarity. And it is really no different for us spiritually. Positioning is everything. Habakkuk in Habakkuk 2.1 says, I will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say to me. Again, in Revelation 4.1, John said, After these things I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven, and the first voice which I 
heard was like a trumpet speaking with me saying, come up here and I will show you things which must take place after this. See, the word of God is not just saying something to us, but rather it's positioning us to see something. God says in Isaiah 43, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Did you catch that? Not in the past, but do not dwell on the past. I don't want you to miss it because right there, God is challenging our position. And now watch the next half of the verse. Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up, do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. You know, I don't know about you, but sometimes it can feel like we're spending a good portion of our prayer and faith life trying to persuade God to move on our behalf. But here in Isaiah, God is suggests that, it's, that that's not the real challenge. God is saying, I am doing a new thing. But the challenge is positioning you to see and perceive what I'm already doing. But listen, how many messages have you and I heard about letting go of our past? How many books have we gone through about the subject? How many scriptures have we studied about it? So why are we still holding on to our past? What is it that keeps us in this dysfunctional relationship with yesterday? But you know, I've come to realize that there is a problem with new, that while new is exciting to pray about, exciting to talk about, even exciting to hear about, new in actual practice is unsettling. There is a reason why newborn babies come out of the womb crying, because what is left out of the conversation is that new equals uncertainty. New comes at the expense of disrupting the familiar. Now, I know that many of you right now are saying in your heads, Pastor, please let God disrupt my familiar. But wait, let's be honest, because what we really want is selective disruption. God, disrupt this over here and disrupt that over there, but leave everything else or leave the rest alone. But that's not how change works. You don't get to choose from a menu of what changes and what doesn't. Why? Because you are not God. And there is a difference between the change you want and the change you need. And the only one who knows the difference is God. Yes, God promised you that he was doing a new thing in your life, but he did not promise you that new was going to happen on your terms. God says in Jeremiah, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans of good and not of evil. Plans to give you a hope and a future. So the question is now, do we trust that His plans for our life is better than our plans? If so, I think the challenge now is for us to look up from where we are. That's what God said to Abraham in Genesis. He said, look up from where you are, look to the north, the south, the east and the west, for, far, for as far as your eye can see, I'm giving it to you. Now I know that look up from where you are can seem like a simple instruction, but simple does not always equal easy. We read over these passages so quickly without taking into account the gravity and the difficulty of truly and fully releasing all the soul ties and the trust of what we're standing on right now and giving over that same trust to a untried horizon. But God still says, son, daughter, I've got plans beyond this. Trust in me and look up. And I know looking up can be much more than an event, but a process. But this is why we can actually end up resisting new. We resist the very thing we said we wanted. 
we resist the thing that we even prayed for because we rarely embrace change, which is why much of the time, change is compulsory. Think about childbirth. The child does not come out of the womb. It's pushed out of the womb. And to those who may have a problem with believing that God would push us into anything, well, let's just say that when you made the decision to make Christ Lord in your life, He took you up on that decision. And God is more committed to His plan for your life than you are. I mean, think about the book of Acts, the promise that Christ gave the disciples right before the ascension. He told them, you are going to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and to the uttermost parts of the world. Sounds like a fantastic promise, right? But the thing is, Jerusalem was really going well for the disciples. They were growing in numbers, growing in the faith. They were growing in their fellowship with one another, growing in favor. In every way, Jerusalem was working. And with Jerusalem working so well, there was no reason for them to leave. There was no reason for them to leave that space. Except that at one point, the Bible says persecution broke out against the disciples. And all of a sudden, all of these believers had to scatter. Had to scatter to the uttermost parts of the world. And wherever they went, they were witnesses of the gospel. So with that in mind, the real question is not whether or not God is at work steering our movements. But the real question is, do we trust the sovereignty of God's plan enough in our lives to look up? To look up from the disappointments of how we thought things should have gone. But listen, I more than get it. Change can be so chaotic. In fact, the only difference between change and chaos is perspective. Because at first glance, they look and they feel like the same thing. For example, if you are moving from an apartment, let's say into a new home, and I came into your apartment while you were in the middle of packing, without knowing where you were going, the condition of your apartment would look and seem chaotic. But if I could look up from all of those boxes and shift my attention from the scattered belongings and listen to the testimony of what you're moving towards, that the testimony gives me perspective so that what I once labeled as chaos, I can now embrace as the process of change. Look up because there is something more to what you are going through right now. Look up from your past, look up from where you are, Look up and trust that your life's movement are not a victim of circumstance, but rather divinely positioned. Look up because God is doing a new thing. Now, Heavenly Father, I know for so many of us, our lives right now, it feels like a leaf being blown back and forth by the winds of change. But I pray that right now that you would give us the grace that you would give us the peace, give us the confidence that you order our steps and you order our ways, my God, and that we are right where we need to be. We thank you now, my God, that we can look up because you are doing a new thing in our lives. Hey, and again, we want to thank all of our supporters who have faithfully supported this ministry throughout the years. We thank God for your partnership in the gospel with us. And those of you who are watching and you're not a supporter yet, but you would like more information on how to do that, just there should be a link on the screen right now. Click it and it'll take you to the space where you can learn more about how you can do that. We love you. God bless you.